know, it's really bad when immigrants can come to this country and learn the tactics of white supremacists that all they need to do to control black Americans is blow a dog whistle. If you blow that dog whistle of black, brown, racism, or racist, the so-called black Americans will come running. Now, it's interesting to me that so many so-called black Americans have jumped on the bandwagon and support Ilhan Omar when she cares nothing about black Americans, but her fight and protest is for illegal immigrants. The only time she mentions black and brown people is when she want your support, when she want your backing, when she wants to feed off of your enemy or your energy. Now, this is a quote that she wrote on Twitter. Says, you all should end this charade. Now, number one, she was the one that started the charade. She was the one that was constantly attacking President Trump. So when he responded, and all he said was that if you don't like this country, if you hate this country, then maybe you should leave and then help build up your country and then come back and talk to us. That's what he said. Now it's interesting that she's coming at Trump like this because number one, she's ha she's got an agenda. I've always said from the start that she was a terrorist, but she's working terrorism at a different level. No, she's not blowing up the World Trade Center, but she's destroying the system from within because now she's a congresswoman and she's able to manipulate and change laws to benefit her agenda. Not the agenda of America, not to benefit your children or your children's children, not to develop programs. And also keep in mind, they're working out of their district. They've done nothing for their own districts. Like Ocasio-Cortez did nothing for the Bronx. Their only agenda is to open borders and to take care of illegal immigrants, criminals that cross the border illegally. So she's been attacking Trump and then when Trump responds, now she jumps on this whole race card thing and she took it beyond her and her squad and now she's blowing a dog whistle for black people. When she mentions that you should all you all should end this charade and accept that this racist president now this is the same racist president that's over the country that helped her out that helped her to get to the position that she's in i remember a time when an immigrant could not run for a political office especially president they just couldn't it used to be that way you had to be born in America, not an immigrant. But now things have changed. Now that she's here in America, she used to be in a refugee camp, according to her. She could have been left in that refugee camp, but America gave her an opportunity to share in the American dream. And this is the thanks that she gives the country that helped her. The minute she became Congresswoman, her foot hit the ground in attacking Israel, attacking President Trump, 
and she's only doing what Americans allow her to do. So she said, you all should end this charade and accept that this racist president want every black and brown person, keep in mind, she says every black and brown person. That also includes me, which I don't believe that President Trump want me deported. Where would he deport me to? And where would he deport the average so-called black American? But when black when black Americans see black and brown persons, where he wants a racist president, wants every black and brown person deported. That's gonna send out dog whistles and black people are gonna start saying, well, she's right, I support her, right? I support her and why aren't you supporting her? So because you don't support her, because your skin is brown, then now, they start spewing racism towards you. They start spewing hatred and threats towards you. And as far as her being threatened, with somebody threatened to put a bullet in her, that's what happens when you become controversial like that, especially if you're not from this country. Yes, she might have been born here, but she represents the country of her origin, of her foreparents. See, and there's a lot of other stuff that's going on about her. So she she's not for the benefit of America or Americans, and definitely not for black people or so-called black Americans. Because I spoke on a video, man, where a black woman was talking about how she was able to pick herself up from her bootstraps, and Ilhan Omar attacked her, quickly attacked that woman and tore her down because of the fact that she's now thinking outside of the demon crap box. She quickly attacked her. So she says that you all should end this charade and accept that this racist president want every black and brown person deported and Muslims banned. Now, he didn't say that. None, all this stuff is false. What he's talking about when it comes to Muslims, he's talking about how Muslims coming from Islamic countries should be vetted. Just don't open your doors to them. What do you think happened on 9-11? Who do you think did that? And other terrorist attacks that took place in this country. So it would be wise, it would be smart, especially if you know you have enemies around the world. And American have enemies around the world. I remember I had a vision, and I put it on my dream channel. I had a vision back in 83, I think it was. It was right after I came out the military. And it was talking about how it was really hot outside. So I'm taking it, it was like the Middle East because I was still in the military, according to the vision and it was so hot man we wanted to roll our sleeves up or take our shirts off or whatever but there was a lot of protesting that was going on and you had these foreigners from the middle east that were chanting americans go home americans go home right and what happened was i went up on this road which is which here is seven north street i was up on this road and from a distance i saw or heard, um, I heard what, what sounded like a nuclear explosion. So in the military, we're taught the flash the bang time and how you have to get on the ground and cover up, you know, your arms, your legs, your, your, your weapon, and, you know, you got your hands under you and until that, um, that shock wave go by. I'm gonna call it shock wave for you guys that really don't understand. It goes back and then it, when it comes back, you have to stay there and you have to count because once it goes out, it's gonna come back. And when it comes back, it takes everything in its path with it, just annihilate it. So when that nuclear bat blast went forward, it's like we were walking down 7 North Street and we had to go through this tunnel. It was really weird because it was like this tunnel. And it's like, we had to send the smallest guy through the tunnel, which 
he's called a tunnel rat. You know, that's what they call a tunnel rat in the military. So we had to send the smallest guy through to see if there's no booby traps or anything like that in there, right? So, I mean, because you'd rather, you know, sacrifice one person than you would sacrifice the whole squad, right? So we had to send this one tunnel rat through there. And when the dude went through, um, it caved in on him. Something happened, man, and you can hear the dude screaming, man. But I woke up out of the dream, out of the vision, crying, man. I was crying and I woke up and I was talking about how bad it was. Now, this was back in 83 and that was only telling me that what was to come to pass you know because it, it is coming it's coming one day and i think that everything that we see happening now um in this country around the world even in the media is all a part of that puzzle that's that's gonna create the destruction of this nation right and Omar, Ilhan Omar is all a part of that, all right? So Americans really have to be careful, especially the so-called black Americans, when you start linking up with foreign entities, man, because in one point you may think they're your friends just because of the fact that they share the same hue or the same color, but in reality, they're really an enemy and working against you. Now, Ilhan Omar, and it was interesting because this preacher, which I commented to on Twitter, was in support of Ilhan Omar. We support you, but this is a Christian minister. So this so-called bishop supports this Muslim woman that's anti-American, and she's um, only for or promotes her own agenda when Christians or better yet, Muslims see Christians as infidels, right? And in Islamic nations, man, they behead Christians. So you have this Christian bishop is in support of this terrorist. And I know that these people don't like for me to refer to her as a terrorist, but that's what she is. She's a terrorist on a completely different level. No, she's not blowing up the World Trade Center or, or bombs or anything like that, but she's working the system to their advantage. She's destroying the system or helping to destroy the system. And it's sad because there's so many Americans that hate Trump so much, they were conditioned to hate Trump so much that they can't really see the truth. And, it, and it's mind blowing when I, when I see comments where they say that, you know, you all need to end this charade when they were the ones that created the charade. Trump only responded to it. You know, so I hadn't heard Trump say anything racist, but yet they talk about Trump as a racist because of the fact that he called or referred to Haiti and some African nations as a shithole country. Well, he was telling the truth. And the so-called black Americans that took offense to that, my question to you is that if you're so down for Haiti, and if you're so down for Africa and the nations of Africa, and you're so offended because Trump referred to it as a shithole country, why don't you vacation in Haiti? or Africa. Usually the average black American vacation may be somewhere in the south, Florida, wherever, but if you go out of the country, man, it's usually Paris, it's Germany, it's other European nations. There's not even Dubai. You visit Dubai if you have the finances for that. But it's not too often that you hear the so-called black Americans vacation in African nations or Haiti. Why not? Because you know yourself that it's a shithole country. If I'm gonna put it in our term, in our language, it's ghetto. And the only thing Trump was saying that is like you have these presidents of other countries, they wanna send the worst of their people here, not the best of their people, not the ones that can offer something. It's like when you leave um, 
one state and go to another state. Now, either you're going to take something to offer to that state, a skill that or, or, or uh, some type of education or knowledge where you can um, benefit maybe a corporation or you can set, start your own business. But instead, you have people leaving one state going to another state just to drop, jump on the welfare system. So now you want to start taking from their resources without putting anything back in. So when Trump say things like they're not sending the best of their people over, they're sending the worst of the people over, the people that's going to drain the economy. And that's why the United States have such a, a debt. That high debt is because of the fact that the demon crafts are constantly spending, 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 spending foolishly. And they spent so foolishly to the point where a lot of programs that actually benefited the people, especially people in the ghetto, or as they say, the inner city, now they had to cut those benefits, man, because of the fact that money was just going out the window. You got people that's content with being in the ghetto and on the system and not contributing anything. Now, one of my family members commented not too long ago, and she said that she wouldn't be surprised if a lot of these immigrants will start getting Social Security. Social Security that they did not pay into it. But yet, because they're already getting driver's license, they can drive in New York State. They're getting free health care. They're getting free food and shelter. And I just posted an article on my WordPress page where in Pennsylvania, they sent letters out to uh, over a thousand parents that was behind in their child's um, school lunch. They got a school lunch bill and they were saying that if they didn't pay that school lunch bill, then their children would be placed in the foster care. Now, I'm going to put that article on the bottom, and I may do a separate video on that. But they're going they're threatening to send these, these kids to foster care because the parents, now keep in mind, they didn't say if your rent or your mortgage is behind. They didn't say if your utilities were cut off. They didn't say if you had a speeding ticket or traffic violation. They said because of the fact that your, your child's lunch bill has not been paid, if you don't pay that bill, your child will go into foster care. But yet, illegal immigrants could come here, get free food, shelter, health care. They can drive legally. And yet, your child is being threatened to be taken away from you because of a school lunch bill that has not been paid. Now, I'm going to put the article on the bottom and you guys can check that out for yourself. And I may do a video on that later on. But see, this is what's happening and it's, it's unfortunate that a lot of y'all can't see it because you're blinded by Trump. You've been bewitched and hoodwinked into hating a man that's only trying to help this country. No, I don't agree with everything Trump. And you, you also have to realize, too, that it's not about Trump. They made it about Trump, but it's really not about Trump. It's the promises that he's keeping, the things that he's trying to do for this country, things that no other president has ever done. It's the changes that he's making to benefit this country. And he's saying, like, look, I got no problems with immigrants. Just come in the right way. And I want to say before I close, it's like a lot of y'all that likes like animals and you go to animal shelters. When you go to that animal shelter to pick up a dog or a cat or whatever, you're not going to just go in there and pick up any animal just because of the fact that animal needs a home. You're going to be very selective on the animal you choose to come home with you because there's people that have gotten animals from, let's say, a cat. They got a cat from an animal shelter. And when they came home, their whole house was tore up. That cat had issues. He came and tore that old house up, man. Cut up the furniture and everything. You know, uh, messed all over the place. Same thing with a dog. And you end up getting rid of that animal because that animal just was not gonna 
abide by your rules, the rules you had in the house. And it's the same thing with people that uh, adopt children. You go to foster care, you want to get into foster care. You just don't go to a foster care and pick any child out that you see, oh, I want that one right there. You want to know about that child's history. What type of environment that that child come out of? What type of behaviors do that child have? Do I have to leave my job every day to go to the school to see about this child because the child is disruptive or violent? You want to choose one of the best children that you can work with and you can help to be uh, productive in society. So that's the same way it is when it comes to immigration. You want the best to come here. Those that's going to come in and contribute and not just take, 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 take. So when Trump refers to a shithole nation, he's talking about these ghetto places. You know these places they show on TV? Hades with the flies and all that? You know, he was telling the truth. That's like if somebody called the ghetto a shithole place. You can't help but agree with it. Now the people that live there may become offended because that's where they live. But if you got somebody that's speaking out against you, and then you turn and say like, look, man, we don't want nobody from that shit old country, man, because they're gonna only come here and drain the, drain the economy. They ain't coming here to, 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 to bring some type of skill to help grow this economy. They're coming here to take from it. That's all he was saying. So again, she wrote, you all should end this charade and accept that this racist president want every black brown person deported not true and muslims banned his immigration policies say this much so you can't black people stop allowing other people not just white people but you have now immigrants that's coming to this country that learn to blow that dog whistle to get you riled up so that you would back them and support them so that they can promote and push their agenda. That's what's happening here. So, President Trump 2020, I will be voting for Trump again. Feedback, tell me what you think. Until next time. I'm fearless.